Hey, what's up YouTube? Coming back at you again. I wanted to do a video on calibrating the D24. You know, there's just no other video out there that I'm aware of that gets into calibrating this particular monitor. Uh, this also applies to the D30. Um, I'm admittedly no expert. Uh, I'm just a guy, but I have spoken at length with Save on Pat over the last month or so, and then for at least an hour going through each of these settings on this monitor. And as much for myself as for you guys, I just wanna memorialize all of this info, just so if I ever have to go back and make changes in the future, I'll kinda know what's going on. So this video is for me, it's also for you guys, hopefully you find it interesting. Um, I do do pro video for a living, so I'm not some noob, uh, but I don't do CRT calibration per se. I sell low voltage AV cabling. I've done that for 20 years. Uh, so I am very familiar with broadcast video, but um, not in this model in particular, which is really cool. So I've done a lot of research. I read the manual back and forth, um, spoke with Pat, picked his brain forever. So these are gonna be basic settings to go through that you can do at home uh, without any special tools uh, to get your uh, BVM D24 or D30 in the best shape that it can be. So uh, again, most of what I got, the info here is from speaking with Pat Gravier. He's a 81 year old Sony technician. Uh, he's a great guy. He spent at least an hour talking with me. Um, and uh, so, this is really going to show you uh, how to properly calibrate it without uh, without any special tools. So um, first off, uh, in order to properly calibrate your monitor, uh, you're going to need to get your caps into spec. So um, the first thing I would do is just check the current status of your monitor. Um, to do that, you just go to the main menu, uh, go down to uh, status, hit enter go down to page two, and then uh, check how many hours are on your monitor. This one's got 19,000 and change. Uh, Pat was telling me that the broadcast standard is 30,000 hours. So once these get to 30,000 hours, they've gone outside of what a studio would use. Um, but he said that they're good into 100,000 hours is what he recommends for like retro gaming where color perfection isn't required you can get you know you can get away with up to 100,000 hours so this one's still got a little bit of life left in it um, but the reason I mentioned that is because the caps that come in these monitors are 10,000 hour rated caps and what that means is that they'll stay within spec for within 10,000 hours they'll still work beyond 10,000 hours but they might drift out of spec if a cap drifts out of spec, then the settings when you try and adjust the monitor uh, may not work because the monitor is without is outside of spec. So uh, it's important to keep that in mind. So my monitor has almost 20,000 hours on it. It's from, I don't, I'm not even sure what year, but um, I went ahead and got it recapped uh, at my local shop. Um, and then once you recap it is when you have to calibrate it. Once you change the caps over, the settings are changed and you need to start over. So I just had this monitor recapped and so now I'm going through the settings and, and getting everything right. So um, with that said, uh, here is what Pat taught me. These are the steps when I went over on the phone with the Sony technician, uh, these are the steps that the Sony technician took me through. Um, and so here we go. Uh, first off, I wanted to talk about the concept of channels. Um, this monitor has a keyboard down in the corner where you can select channels. So that's what we're gonna be looking at here. Um, there are some pre-selected channels, channels 91 through 99, which are adjustment channels. Um, however, uh, you can customize these channels all you want. So you can select all the way up to, I think in the 80s, so up to 80 channels, uh, you can customize each channel for each input. So for instance, I have my Nintendo set up on channel 007 because I play a lot of GoldenEye. So if I hit 007, it takes me over to uh, my GoldenEye, which I was playing earlier, it's still still on. So um, anyway, so I could have channel eight set up to my Super Nintendo or, or whatever. Um, so those are the customizable channels. They're really cool because um, you can 
you can select what slot your input's in, what the signal type is, what the color is, what the contrast is, um, all of those things um, you can set up per channel. So that's how the channels work, but channels, like I said, 91 through 99 are, are pre-selected channels. Um, so we're gonna go through those real quick. Only a few of them are, are relevant here, uh, but we'll start with channel 91. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, we're gonna skip channel 91. 91 is for picture generating equipment, which I don't have. Um, 92, we don't really use. Uh, 93, though, we do use. So we'll go to channel 93093. Uh, that's a white screen. I'm gonna menu out of here. Uh, you can set it to 16.9. So what we're, looking th what we're looking for here is pure white uniformity. And, um, so we're just looking at all four corners of the screen, seeing if it's white. Uh, if you want to make adjustments to that, you can. Uh, you just go to the menu button, hit menu, go down to setup. Let's see, setup. And then you go down to white uniformity. Hit enter, and then we're gonna do manual. If you have a probe, you can use a, um, a color adjusting probe, which I don't have, um, but anyway, you can set it to manual and then you can choose uh, upper left, upper right, bottom left, bottom right, and you can adjust those values to get your white screen set. Um, with all of these settings, you're going to have to do it in both 16.9 and 4x3. Uh, the monitor handles both of those settings differently. so. Uh, for each of these, when you do your white setting, go in and, and adjust it in both. So I'll put it back in 4.3. Everything looks good on mine. I already adjusted it. Um, so that's that's the white uniformity. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, next one up is uh, 094, the scan line. Uh, I'm sorry, the grayscale generator, not scan line generator, grayscale generator. So on this one, what we're doing is we're adjusting the brightness and contrast. Um, so that the lightest gray bar is barely visible, which is how I have it set right now. Um, you have to set the white uniformity first before you can set the grayscale. Uh, so again, to adjust grayscale, you're just gonna adjust the brightness and contrast here on the front. And uh, you'll hit the green button in order to uh, enable those uh, potentiometers. And then you can adjust your brightness and contrast. And what you're again looking for is um, that lightest gray bar to be barely visible. Um, so that is the grayscale generator. That one's pretty easy. Um, next one is uh, 095. So we'll hit 095. That pulls up the cross hatch. Um, so what we're looking for here is to make sure that the lines at the top and the bottom are equal distance. So the line down here and then the line up here are equal in height. And you can see that they are. Um, and to adjust that, uh, you're going to, we'll menu out, that's what Bob, or what Pat called it, we'll menu out here. Um, and then we're gonna go to uh, menu, uh, hold on. All right, menu, down to setup, enter. And then we're gonna go down to extend menu enter and then the password 1111 great job Sony enter then we're gonna go down to maintenance hold on here we're gonna go down to uh, maintenance enter password 1111 enter and then we're gonna go all the way down to the e board so hit down to the E board, hit enter. All right, so here we can adjust horizontal size and position uh, with these settings here, the top four settings, um, horizontal size, horizontal center, vertical size, vertical center. So you can blow it up, shrink it down, move it left or right. Um, again, I already adjusted mine, so that's where my settings are. If you're gonna adjust your settings, then you need to write those settings down before so you don't screw it up. Uh, so that's the cross hatch, and then if you want to go 16.9, you hit the 16.9 button down in the corner, and then you could do the same thing on the left and right side of the screen, making sure that these uh, bars are equal on your left and right. 
and get out of 16.9. So that is how you set up your screen size. And then um, here's the last one. This is probably, this is the grand finale. We'll hit 0.97. Uh, this is the dot signal. Um, so you do need a piece of equipment for this one. You're gonna need a jeweler's loop. Uh, this is a jeweler's loop. Um, the one that I have, I just had this one laying around the house, is a 30X jeweler's loop, which was too powerful, but it still worked. Um, you Ideally, what Pat said is you want a 10X jeweler's loop, or he said you could use a just a, a strong magnifying glass, but a jeweler's loop is what Sony recommends. And then basically what you're gonna do is, um, well, first of all, you're gonna scroll down to page five of nine, so let's hit down a whole bunch of times. All right, and then the setting that you're gonna do is the vertical static convergence VSTAT conv. Uh, and the, the, st the original setting from the factory is 128. I had to adjust mine up to 187. And then you got the uh, horizontal stat, which is um, 24, because I have a 24 inch monitor. Um, and so you can adjust, that would be horizontal uh, going this way, uh, vertical going this way. Uh, so basically what you do is those are the two you're gonna mess with. Start with the V-stat convergence, um, and then you're gonna take your jeweler's loop, and I, I can't do it with, with one hand, but you're gonna take your jeweler's loop and you're going to um, look at each dot with the magnifying glass and you're gonna see a red, green, and blue dot. When you get in close with that magnifying loop, you're actually gonna see, from a distance it looks white, but when you get in there real close, you'll see a red, green, and blue little phosphor glow, it's really cool. And um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna adjust that V-stack convergence until those dots are as close as possible. And so at the center of the screen, that's the most critical part. That's where you're gonna wanna make sure you get it exactly perfect at the center. But you're also gonna wanna care about the corners. Um, at the corners is where it gets tricky. Uh, that's where the convergence tends to go off. Um, on the D30, um, on page 50 of the owner's manual, there is the uh, convergence fine adjust where you can go through each section of the monitor section by section and converge each dot individually which is or each two inch section I believe um, individually which is awesome the d24 can't do that but you can still get really really close um, so anyway you're gonna just I would check the check the corners check the center you know kind of check around and this is the hardest step I think but once you get it right it really looks good. Um, what Pat told me was the in the uh, broadcast spec is a white dot from three feet away, and I had no no problem getting that. I mean, even before I adjusted mine, I was already getting a white dot from three feet away. But when I went in there with the jeweler's loop, uh, it was actually the red was like higher than the rest of the dots, and I didn't notice it from three feet. But then once I noticed it, I was like, oh god, it started driving me crazy. And so thank goodness for that V stat convergence. That was a, a definitely a key uh, setting to get changed. Um, also, just a couple notes, watch your contrast. Um, if, you, if you adjust your contrast too much, it'll blow out some of these colors and it'll make it look like you have a double line. So that was another thing that I ran into when I was uh, adjusting it and getting the picture exactly right was you just gotta be careful with your contrast. When you switch between systems, each system has you know slightly different output voltages and contrast levels and everything so that's what's so great about the channels is you can set up each channel to tailor to each system and so each system looks as great as it possibly can I mean that's really what we're all trying to get right we all get RGB in the right sync and and, and do all this stuff but really the last step to get everything to look right is to get the uh, the uh, the calibration correct so uh, anyway um, hopefully this video was helpful for you uh, those are the settings that's what Pat the Sony engineer technician guy told me um, so there it is for all of you to watch um, that's it if you if I missed anything surely I did again I'm not I'm not a Sony tech I'm just a guy who spoke with the Sony tech and I'm trying to help you all out so uh, if there's anything that 
that I need to add, please, please share it because uh, I, I want to get it exactly right too. So um, anyway, I hope that helps. Maybe you guys learned something um, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Peace.